So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a good lunch. And um, for the second half, I'm going to guide you through the uh, web interfaces of Ismar and Crema, uh, how to upload the data, uh, what kind of data you can upload, uh, how to do it properly. And uh, also in the end, uh, I will show you uh, how to uh, use uh, average and feature of Ismara in order to uh, calculate yeah, different uh, interesting things, how to average replicates, uh, how to calculate contrasts between different uh, sample subsets. All right. So uh, first I would like to start with a table which uh, shows uh, what organisms are currently supported by Ismara. So in addition, in this table, you can see uh, a different statistic on how many motifs, how many transcription fractures, uh, what genome versions are supported. And uh, here I must note that we uh, show here on the, the latest uh, genomes supported by Ismara. For example, for human and mouse, there is also support for uh, MM9 and MM10 versions of the mouse genome. The same for human, we also support uh, AG18 and AG19. And now about the supported data types. So ISMARA is designed to analyze gene expression data and either it accepts results of uh, next generation sequencing either in uh, form of raw reads in FASTQ format or mapped reads in BAM or BAT format. Ismara also uh, can process microarray data. Uh, uh, so it was originally designed to support affymetrics uh, microarray chips. And uh, we have now support for various chips for human, mouse, red, east, and e. coli. But potentially, if you would like yeah, to have support for some uh, chip uh, uh, for our organism, which is not yet supported, please contact us so we can work on this. So uh, first about uh, how we process microarray data if we obtain it. So uh, first of all, we uh, make correction of web ground and uh, uh, also remove unspecific binding using different bioconductor packages like AFI, Oligo, and GCRMA. Then we uh, filter out uh, props which are not expressed. Quantile normally uh, quantile normalize the expression values, and finally we log transform the data. And in this form, it goes into Ismar. In case of uh, raw read processing, for RNA seq, uh, we first map reads uh, to the transcriptome with a Callisto program. When we count how many reads we have per transcript, which was uh, shown by the Eric in the morning, we calculate uh, TPM values for every promoter, log transform the data, and when we analyze it. The same for ChIPSEC, with a difference that, uh, first of all, ChIPSEC data we map not to the uh, transcriptome, but we map it to promoter regions. And uh, also, instead of uh, calculating TPM values, we just quantile normalize the counts of reads which fall into the promoter regions. But uh, since release of the CREMA, chipsec support in ISMARA is absolute. So we, if you want to analyze your chipsec data, so we strongly recommend to use CREMA and not ISMARA. So, also, it's possible to upload not the raw reads, but uh, mapped reads, like in BAM or BAT format. So, and in this case, we just use absolute genomic coordinates to uh, map, uh, uh, basically, to count reads uh, in the transcripts. Then again, we calculate TPM values for every promoter, log transform the data, and process it. We strongly recommend, if you have a choice, to submit the raw data instead of map data, just to keep a consistent processing, processing of the data within ISMARA pipeline. So uh, 
what kind of uh, file formats are supported. So these are cell, BAM, BAT, and FASTQ. And it's very important that files have uh, the correct uh, file extension because uh, in Ismara, files are recognized by uh, extension they have. Uh, in addition to, uh, to these uh, extensions, Ismara also supports uh, files which are compressed in different forms. So like uh, zipped, tart, uh, zipped, and so on. Uh, actually, you can uh, submit uh, archive which contains, for example, FASTQ data or uh, bad data on cell files. And when such archive will be automatically decompressed, files are going to be extracted and uh, properly analyzed. What is also important, uh, uh, when you submit uh, map treats, like in bad or bound format, uh, please make sure that uh, this uh, data was, was mapped to the, genome, to the same genome version which is used by ESMAR. Because yeah, if your data were mapped to let's say AG19 and you run ISMAR with AG38, of course, it's not going to work properly. <clears throat> also, does it make sense uh, to compress everything as much as possible? So certainly it makes sense uh, for files like cell, bed, and fast queue, because uh, compressing these files, uh, you can significantly reduce the file size. And uh, reduced file size, of course, minimize uh, the upload time and uh, probability of network errors, which can happen during upload. It makes no sense to compress BAM files because BAM files are already compressed. And uh, usually there is no benefits to compressing all files into one archive. So if you have just a bunch of FASTQ zipped files, so please don't put it in, into one big zip file so it, it, it doesn't help. All right. Okay, now we are coming to a very important uh, point about uh, good representation of your data in the, uh, on the report pages. So uh, underneath, so at the bottom of the slide, I have uh, two examples. So this is essentially the same uh, uh, activity profile, uh, which is shown uh, for samples sorted in different order. And uh, I'm sorry, I have missed one important point. So uh, when you upload data to Ismara, Ismara takes the file names uh, as a sample names. And uh, all the data later on, for example, on uh, motif activity profiles are basically represented following the alphabetical order of these uh, file names. And in case uh, on the left, you can see the, basically a profile which has a proper file naming, proper sample naming, and they are sorted correctly. And you can see there is a clear difference between, for example, day zero and day three. And if you had the same uh, files named differently, so the order is broken here. And in this case, you have profile, which is uh, very hard to interpret unless you uh, take an effort to really trace back what exactly are uh, property of each sample in the data set. So basically we are following rules, how to name uh, the FASTQ files. So uh, the names should be uh, uh, relatively short. They should have uh, intuitive meaning and uh, also, yeah, uh, desired order of the samples which you would like to see in the report should follow the alphabetical order. Also, one important thing about very long uh, uh, sample names is that when they are shown, uh, well, for example, on the plots, very long names are trun get truncated, and uh, which also reduce the uh, 
ability to understand data correctly. Okay, and here's some example of a good naming scheme for the uh, samples which you upload to the web server and bad example. So in one case, we have some comprehensive, relatively short names, which are self-explanatory. And uh, on the right, uh, we have just file names with some uh, identifiers, which are unclear. This is what usually you can obtain from a database, but uh, it's really hard to interpret, interpret later on. So I strongly suggest that uh, you take some effort before uploading the data and uh, rename the files correctly. So for people who use uh, Linux-based machines, yeah, uh, the easiest thing is just to create symbolic links to the files with desired names and then use these symbolic links to upload the data. All right. Uh, and the last thing, uh, also there is a, a trick to enforce the desired uh, sample order by using uh, numerical prefixes in the sample names. And uh, uh, on the left, I show some kind of good examples so where you have numerical prefixes and they just follow the desired uh, order. And please pay attention that there is a leading zero in the file name. And this is very important because without leading zeros, yeah, the uh, order will be broken again. And uh, yeah, for example, the sample with, uh, which starts with 14 will, will come yeah, ahead of sample which starts with one. So using uh, such tricks, you can easily uh, uh, obtain very nice uh, representation of your results, which will help you to uh, explore and uh, extract some useful information from the analysis. Uh, next part about file naming is uh, about requirements for proper PERT and uh, FASTQ file processing. So uh, PERT and FASTQ files uh, require a special suffix at the end. So uh, it should be uh, uh, for first read uh, in the pair uh, R1 suffix at the end, and for the second read, it should be minus, uh, underscore R2. And uh, Ismara uh, understands only these suffixes. So if you have paired end data, please make sure that uh, your FASTQ files have the correct suffixes at the end for proper processing. All right, so let's say you have uh, prepared all your files and you would like to upload it to, uh, to Ismara server. So you go to web page. And uh, so here is actually a submission interface. Uh, first of all, you can provide uh, your email address. It's not required, but it's strongly recommended because in case of any problems, so for example, your uh, data set fails for some reason or upload was not complete. So we, in such cases, we can contact you and actually uh, help to resolve all the issues. Second field is a project name. It's also optional, but uh, again, it's strongly recommended, uh, especially for people who run multiple analysis on Ismara. And uh, uh, project name will later on uh, incredibly help you to distinguish between results pages, because on result page, you can see the uh, project name on the top. And so uh, you're not going to mistake uh, one analysis with another one. So the next row uh, is a selector for data type. So uh, you can choose microarray, RNA-seq, and chip-seq. And uh, then there is also a selector you can choose if you would like to run uh, your data set uh, with microRNAs included or without microRNAs included. So in order to upload files, you just need to click uh, Upload Files button. It will bring you a very simple interface like, yeah, shown here, Add File, Start, Cancel. And also in case if you uh, up, 
if you like to upload, upload next generation sequence and data, uh, it will show you uh, a selection where you can choose which organism version you would like uh, so for, uh, to use for analysis. So as I said, so we have here selection, human, mouse, zebra, fish, and so on. So how to add uh, how to add data uh, for upload? So you just click this uh, add files button. So you get a file selection dialog, and in this file selection dialog, you can uh, choose multiple files at once. Add them to the interface, and once they are added, you just click uh, start upload button, and yeah, everything starts to upload. Actually, uh, in this window, you can see a, a progress. So, which tells you approximately how much time the upload uh, will take. Uh, with Ismar, you can upload also uh, links to the data files instead of real files. So, in order to do this, you just need to select uh, uh, the second button, which says Upload File Links, and there you will have a text input field in which you can paste a list of links which uh, point to the uh, to the data files so the rule is it should be uh, one link per line and once you have all your links in this uh, input field you just click submit links button and everything sent to the server what happens next actually uh, on the server uh, all your files will be downloaded, and once download is complete, yeah, the analysis will start. And the third option is to, uh, instead of uh, links to the files, you can use uh, database IDs from a sequence read archive database. So they are shown here. So we start with uh, SRR prefix. And uh, again, you just need to paste these uh, database uh, IDs, one per line in text input field, and then submit it. But uh, here we have an extra feature which can ma make your life much easier. So for every uh, database ID, you can basically add also uh, a little, uh, so a desired uh, sample name. And in this case, downloaded files, will be automatically renamed uh, just to, to give you a nice representation of results later on. All right. Uh, what is important about uh, uh, submission of uh, database IDs, it's probably worth to mention here that uh, sometimes uh, connection to database is relatively slow. And uh, for data set which contains large amount of other IDs, uh, download can take really long uh, time, much longer than analysis itself. So in this case, please just be patient. <coughs> okay, so I, I, I have shown already how to upload the data uh, through the web interface. So it's a very simple solution. You just go to the page, add files, click button, and everything starts to load. But uh, the problem is that it requires uh, that your, uh, you should have your files on your local computer. Sometimes data sets, especially in the next generation sequencing, will be extremely large. And uh, it's hard actually to first transfer and even store them on the local machine. In this case, there is a, a second option. This is Ismara Uploader script. Uh, so this is a script which can be run in a command line uh, uh, through, the, for example, SSH se session directly on a data storage machine. And uh, this is a very good alternative to the web interface. It's uh, usually more robust, uh, less vulnerable for network errors while uploading large data sets. The only thing is that it's a little bit more complicated because it requires some knowledge of uh, Linux command line and uh, it also requires some uh, Python environment available on the machine. 
Mikhail. Yes. There is a question about uh, if you're using uh, SRR with paired reads, paired end reads, how uh, how should you um, do this? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, good question. So uh, the thing is that uh, uh, as uh, so database ID, it basically correspond to some database record. And in case of a single end, it will just contain uh, single FASTQ files. In case of paired entries, it will contain uh, basically both FASTQ files for the first end and for the second. So uh, basically uh, uh, our tool, in case of paired end uh, sequencing, will download uh, uh, two corresponding FASTQ files if uh, uh, corresponding database record is for paired end data. So users shouldn't shouldn't worry about this. So they just give database ID and that's all. And then already on our side, we properly decide, yeah, if it's paired end or it's single end. All right. So uh, a bit more about uploader, which could be also useful for people who uh, would like to integrate it into some pipelines, which we have, because uh, it can be uh, embedded into some pipeline processing uh, for automatic data submission. And later on, with some uh, you, you can also add uh, some parts for automatic data retrieval. So uh, it's a simple Python script. Uh, it uh, uh, provides all the functionality of web interface. So basically you can uh, upload exactly the same things, exactly with the same options. And uh, yeah, uh, software environment, which requires for required for this uh, script is very simple and can be easily installed with, for example, Conda package manager or with other package managers, which you like. And yeah, I try to basically, uh, show some standard usage scenario when, for example, there is a user computer, you connect uh, uh, to the remote uh, data uh, server uh, where your data is actually stored and you run this script in order to upload data to Ismara server and then uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go to, uh, to the Ismara server and see the results uh, of the analysis. So uh, basically what kind of input required for this script? This script, uh, first of all, requires a, a file which contains information about uh, files you would like to upload. So it should contain paths to the uh, files. In this case, in example, I show paths to fastq files. So again, it should be a single path uh, per line. Uh, the same rules about naming applies as before as for web interface. So you just uh, have a file with file parts and that's enough. But in addition to uh, file paths, you can actually also supply a list of uh, links if you like, or a uh, list of uh, database IDs. So exactly like in a web interface, you can uh, provide uh, different database IDs and even annotate, if, uh, annotate them with uh, desired uh, sample name. So, and uh, here basically example how to run uh, the uploader script and what kind of options it's, it accepts. So, uh, uh, Basically, you uh, use the following command, know how Python is my uploader. You can specify your email. Again, this is optional. You can skip it. You specify your project. You need to specify the data type, RNA-seq, chip-seq, microarray. And then you can specify the organism ID or genome version. So for example, it could be human, mouse, or you can specify that it should be uh, MM39 or MM10, if you like. You can also uh, specify if you would like to uh, to have mirrors included over the analysis. And finally, you provide uh, uh, the file list. So uh, when you start the script, this script starts to upload the data to the server. And once upload is finished, 
it actually will uh, return a link to the uh, Ismar server page, which uh, should contain your results. And if you execute command like this, these links will be uh, saved in results link uh, file. And uh, so you can check a uh, GitHub page for documentation, examples, and yeah, and download script and start to use it. So uh, once data is uploaded to the server, uh, either through web interface or uh, through the uploader script, the first thing which uh, appears is uh, the Ismar status page status page of your project. So a uh, very important thing here is that um, people who do not provide em email address when they submit a job, they should save this URL somewhere in order to check your data later on. Uh, because people who submit data uh, with email address, they will get an automatic notification once analysis is finished. If no email uh, address provided, but the only way uh, to see the status of the job and uh, and see results when analysis is finished is to uh, check the URL of the status page. So once the processing is finished, actually this page will be automatically updated and you will see uh, the Ismara results page instead of the status messages. Also, in case of uh, any errors uh, during the uh, computational analysis, so uh, yeah, uh, these errors will be shown also on the status page. And yeah, in case if you see something, you can immediately contact us yeah, and ask for help. All right. Okay, this I have already described. Uh, now, how long does it take actually to run uh, uh, Ismara? So I would say uh, that normally, uh, on average, Ismara runs uh, from one to a few hours. Of course, sometimes people submit very large data set data sets. In this case, yeah, running time can be uh, up to one day, but normally it's uh, one to four hours. And uh, in case if uh, uh, analysis is not finished in 24 hours, most probably something went wrong. And in this case, we suggest that you contact us. But also I must say that uh, uh, we regularly check uh, content, uh, say, we check our server for errors. And if we, we detect any errors, we also try to contact users in such cases yeah, in order to resolve the issues. Okay, it was a question already about uh, confidential data. So a few things about how actually data stored on the server. So first of all, results now are kept on the server for six months. So this is a guaranteed time. After six times, we may delete the results folder just to free the disk space. So uh, the user input data is actually removed as soon as analysis is complete. So we don't keep user data on the uh, submitted user data on the server. Uh, every uh, Ismara uh, run is um, saved under unique URL and basically uh, only person who knows the URL can access it. And uh, as Eric mentioned, so we have uh, also Ismara version with extended security options, which require license and which include uh, uh, password protected access, uh, isolated storage, uh, restricted access to the data. Yeah, so potentially, yeah, we can also work with uh, confidential data. Mikhail? Yes. There is a question in the chat. How can we cancel our own job? Okay, uh, in fact, you couldn't. Yes. So uh, jobs, uh, right now, it's it's not possible. Um, yeah, 
but uh, a, a, again if you think that something very wrong happened yeah you can always just mail to me and yeah i can check what is going on the server and yeah if there is some something wrong i will fix it all right now we uh move to the uh uh, overview of uh, downloads which are provided by Ismar. So, uh, what kind of data you can get in a flat file format for uh, follow up analysis on your own. So, uh, first of all, uh, downloads are available on the left of the main results page. So, you can see I have highlighted it this in the red, and there is a list of files which you can download. So, uh, so these, first of all, uh, activities, uh, activity error bars, you can download uh, uh, regulatory interactions inferred by Ismara, uh, significance table. Uh, you can also uh, download the expression uh, uh, table, which was used for uh, Ismara analysis. And in the end, you can download uh, the whole report as a, a compressed archive. So uh, first of all, uh, about activity table, uh, so we provide data in the form of uh, TSD file. So this is just simple text file, ASCII text uh, with all values tab separated. And uh, yeah, the format is very simple. So uh, as a header line, uh, we have uh, motifs. Uh, as a first column, these are the sample names. And uh, basically every value corresponds to the uh, motif and sample pair and represents the uh, activity which uh, predicts expression change in, in corresponding sample. Yeah, if you have uh, one binding motif of a corresponding, uh, one binding uh, side of the corresponding motif. The same applies for the uh, activity error bars table. So uh, activity delta stable, so it uh, has exactly the same structure, but uh, in, instead of activities, it just contains uh, corresponding uh, error bars, again, for uh, every motif in uh, M in sample S. And uh, so, for example, these tables are used to build, uh, to draw the uh, activity profiles, which Eric has demonstrated earlier. So you can do it also yourself and uh, yeah. play, for example, with order of samples or uh, make some changes and so on. All right, regulatory interaction. So uh, these are the tables which actually contain information about uh, 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 interaction between motif and its target. So this is a uh, so this is a big tar archive which contains uh, one file for each motif so they are named correspondingly inside the tar archive and inside each file uh, you have uh, a table which contains uh, four columns the first column contain uh, a promoter name then it uh, contains a log likelihood score uh, then motif name, which interacts with given promoter. And uh, finally, it also contains uh, uh, information about transcripts, which were associated with given, so which are actually uh, driven by a given promoter. So in this case, for example, we have uh, a promoter, which is located on chromosome 19, and it drives the single trans uh, transcript yeah, from uh, cytochrome P450 gene. Uh, then uh, we also provide a table which contains information about uh, motif significances. This is basically the table which you see on the main uh, results page. So, uh, and it's very simple. It has only two columns. So you have a column which contain uh, motif names and column which contains significances. And uh, 
and yeah one one uh, one thing is that uh, this table is already pre-sorted so on the top you see uh, the most significant motifs and uh, yeah just to remind you that uh, motif significance is essentially a squared z values uh, average and square rooted all right and uh, finally ah uh, not finally uh, we also provide expression tables, uh, a table uh, which contain promoter expression values. So uh, again, this is a top separated file, uh, which we have uh, expression values for every promoter sample uh, pair. So uh, for rows, you have promoters, for columns, you have samples, and values are uh, locked to uh, TPM values. So in case if you would like to uh, also do some analysis on expression, you can use this table. And uh, finally, uh, you can download also the full report. And uh, this is a TAR archive, which contains uh, basically all report HTML pages, all pictures, uh, these downloadable files. Uh, and uh, on these web pages, you basically have almost the same functionality. So you have interactive pictures, you have tables which you can sort and uh, in which you can search for different terms. The only uh, things which are missing in a local copy of Ismara report are, uh, so these are the gene search function, which is not available because it requires uh, a server. Then a uh, page with uh, promoters sorted by a uh, fraction of explained variance is also not available. And uh, it's also not possible to use a uh, local copy of a report to perform sample averaging. All right. So uh, I think that was about uh, Ismar. So are there any questions? No, okay. In this case, uh, let's move now to uh, Crema. So like for Ismara, I, uh, here I uh, show the list of species which are currently supported in Crema. So it's only four and we have uh, uh, no, no variety for uh, genome uh, versions here. But uh, I had this uh, question already previously in the chat. So I can say that uh, uh, updated version of human and mouse AG38 and MM39 will be added to CREMA very soon. Uh, yeah, and basically, yeah, uh, they use exactly the same collection of motif and transcription factors which we have in ESMAR. All right, uh, so what kind of data is supported by CREMA? So currently, uh, CREMA supports uh, only uh, next generation sequencing data in PASQ format and uh, also supported data types include either chromatin accessibility data from ATAC-seq or DNA-seq experiments or uh, CHIP-seq uh, histone modification data like yeah, uh, different uh, epigenetic marks. Uh, methylation or acetylation marks and so on. So uh, what is important, unlike uh, ISMARA, CREMA requires uh, one uh, extra additional file for every data set to be submitted to the server. And uh, so I'm going to explain what is it right now. So for every data set, we expect uh, some sample annotation file, which we call, uh, sorry, we expect that it's going to be call, called samples TSV. And it contains information about uh, uh, associate basically files with uh, uh, some condition names. Uh, and moreover, it, it should also provide information what uh, kind of uh, data is in this file. So uh, I'm talking about this uh, second column, and this is especially important for CHIPSEC experiment where we should know uh, which uh, files are coming from uh, 
uh, correspond to foreground in chipsec experiment and which uh, files correspond to the background in the chipsec experiment. Otherwise, uh, we, this is a very flexible way to submit the data in the sense that, uh, first of all, you don't now need to rename files anyhow. You shouldn't care about any adding any suffixes for paired end or single end data. So everything is defined, defined by the names which, which you provide for the samples in the first call. Moreover, it is also possible to mix now, uh, for example, single end and paired end data. It's possible to have uh, multiple FASTQ files per one condition. So in such cases, for example, here I have two FASTQ files for condition one. So these files are basically are going to be merged. Uh, so also, uh, the last column for uh, FASTQ file 2 is optional. So in case if you have single end data, you just ignore the last column and leave it empty and that's all. So basically for every data set, you need to provide a file with description in order, uh, yeah, in order to cream out to perform the analysis. All right. So uh, I basically said this already. Yeah, multiple files per sample and mixture of paired end and single end data. Uh, all right. So, and about naming rules, as I already said, it's absolutely uh, not required that you renamed your files anyhow. So we they could have any names, but uh, for sample naming, uh, we uh, ask user to use the same rules as for crema. So sample names should be comprehensive, they should be relatively short, if, as short as possible. And uh, also in case of crema, order of sample names in the plot is defined by order of sample names in samples TSV file. So you can very easily define the desired or order by, by just uh, jungling the rules in this file. All right, now we go to the Crema web interface, uh, this is quite similar to uh, what we have for Ismara. So again, uh, we have uh, email and project optional fields, which we uh, strongly recommend to fill for exactly the same reasons. Uh, so in case if something goes wrong, we can contact you, we can try to resolve the problem. So uh, next step, you have to, to select what kind of data you have, either uh, this is accessibility data or this is a, a chipset data. Uh, then you have to specify the uh, genome version, which is going to be used for the analysis. And, and once it's finished, all you need to do is just to click this add files button. And then you need just to add the files like in Ismara, but yeah, please don't forget this samples TSV file, which will be present. So basically you upload your samples TSV file, you upload corresponding uh, FASTQ files, and uh, essentially that's all. Like in uh, Ismara, you can also, you also have a progress bar, which will tell you how much time your upload is going to take. So it's quite similar. And uh, Along with uh, uploading uh, real files, uh, CREMA also uh, accepts um, uh, database IDs and links, and, and it all done uh, using these uh, samples TSV file. So instead of file paths uh, in this file, you can actually give, uh, for example, as our, uh, SRA uh, ID, like it's shown here. Again, in case, yeah, uh, you shouldn't worry about this. If this is a single end uh, data, it will be automatically recognized. If it's paired end data, it's also going to be automatically recognized. And uh, also the same way you can uh, add links instead of file paths. And yeah, uh, like Ismar Krima is going automatically to download uh, files either from database or from internet. And once upload is finished, it will run the analysis. Moreover, yeah, uh, 
with this file format, it's uh, actually possible even to mix different types of, of data. So you can upload, for example, only two FASTQ files and the rest you would like to obtain from database. So yeah, it's all going to, uh, it, it, it's all going to be done automatically on Crema server to download and things from the first database and then from the uh, internet links. All right. Yes. So uh, we also provide a Crema uploader script, uh, which can be used uh, from the command line. Uh, and uh, as before, uh, I can strongly recommend it for people who work on large data sets, which uh, who keep the data on a remote data storage system. So uh, you just use the script to run it from command line on the remote machine, exactly uh, the same way as uh, was uh, shown before for Ismara. And basically it has exactly the same requirements for uh, software to be pre-installed. So it's essentially, you just need a Python with a couple, li with a couple libraries and that's all. And uh, of course, all uh, details you can find on GitHub page. And uh, here again, a little demonstration how to submit your things. So you again, uh, like in web interface, you can supply your email and project. You need just to select what kind of uh, data you have. Either this is a, a epigenetic marks or this is a, a chromatin accessibility data. You select the genome version which to use. Then you provide this sample CSV file as input, and uh, after upload is finished, your uh, link to to the results to the status page at first is kept inside this results link file. Ah, yeah. sorry, this I already explained. Okay. So Crema status page is uh, has exactly the same function as Ismara status page. So uh, while your uh, job is running on the server, it just shows the status, uh, either computing or, uh, for example, if first it needs to download something from internet, it will show you which files it's downloading currently. Uh, in case of a error, it will just show you some error. Yeah, and again, in such cases, you can contact us to ask for assistance. Okay, now about uh, running time. Actually, I made a mistake. Okay, so Crema running time is uh, actually much longer than Ismara because uh, while uh, for Ismara we use a very fast al al pseudo alignment algorithm, in Crema we uh, have to read uh, to map reads genome wide, and sometimes it uh, takes quite a long time. And uh, on average, I would say that uh, small data set require at least few hours, but uh, for large data set it will be a few days. Uh, in order to run the analysis. So in general, if your uh, uh, data set has a re reasonable size, I would say around 20 samples, uh, and it's not finished in 48 hours, then yeah, it might indicate that something went wrong and you can uh, contact us. Yeah, so we will check the status of the job. All right, so um, now about uh, downloads. Uh, like before, uh, all downloads are listed on the uh, uh, left uh, of the main page, of the main results page. And uh, yeah, here what we have. So first of all, we provide uh, users with uh, CRE, uh, list of uh, regulatory elements. Then we also provide table which contains uh, signal intensities of series uh, across samples, uh, activity and activity error bar uh, tables, uh, regulatory interactions between motifs and uh, regulatory elements, table of motif significance, significances, and finally you can download, like for Ismara, uh, the whole report as a compressed uh, archive. 
So uh, CRA, CRA list, which we provide, so this is again a text file with top separated values, uh, which contains uh, the following information. First, these are coordinates of a, a regulatory element. Uh, it also cont contains length of a CRA, uh, when CRA ID, and then it also uh, has information about closest uh, TSS. So in this case, this is uh, this uh, transcript, which is closest to the regulatory element. And then for, for this transcript, there is additional field which contains information about transcript, including uh, distance to the regulatory, to, to, to this regulatory element, and also association probability, which was calculated, like uh, Eric has shown in the previous uh, session. Uh, when a uh, signal intensity table is uh, very simple, these are just uh, uh, log of uh, normalized read counts, which are given uh, per regulatory element and per sample. Activity table, uh, uh, exactly the same as for Ismara. So for every motif and sample pair, uh, we actually have activity value. Uh, the same about error bars table. Uh, again, uh, so this is simple text file with top separated values and with error bar, which uh, correspond to sample and motif pairs. And uh, regulatory interactions file uh, contain again, uh, so this is a tar archive, which contains a set of files, uh, one file for each motif. And inside this file, we have uh, again, a regulatory element identifier. Uh, actually, I must say these uh, identifiers, they contain uh, information about uh, regulatory element position. So as you can see, actually, yeah, it has a, a organism ID, and then this is actually coordinates of CRI on the genome. So when it contains a log likelihood score, motif, which interacts with this CRI, and then again, it contains inform information about the closest transcript to the uh, cis regulatory element. So, and yeah, here it contains transcript ID, gene name, gene ID, gene description. And yeah, this potentially inter might be interesting for some people. So it contains distance between transcript and regulatory element and also association probability of uh, regulatory element and the transcript. Uh, finally, we have a motif significance table and it's a bit different. From what we have in Ismara, it's extended in the sense that uh, so uh, it includes first of all uh, a column of motif names, then a column of significances, and actually this table is pre-sorted by significances, so the most important motifs you see on the top. But then, in addition, we actually have a, a columns which correspond to the samples and then for every sample and every motif we have a z value in this uh, sample for this motif so it basically contains significances like and show it shows shown here and it also contains a uh, z values for each samples so also inside all right and finally uh like for Ismara, uh, CRIMA report uh, uh, contains all the information which uh, you have online, uh, like HTML pages, pictures. Actually, it also contains CRI information in different in, in GFF format and uh, binding sites predictions you can also find there. Uh, the only missing features, these are uh, uh, interactive features like a uh, gene search function, uh, uh, page which contains information about fraction of explained variance per promoter and it doesn't provide averaging functionality. So uh, like for Ismara, for CRIMA data kept on the server minimum for six months 
and uh, yeah, uh, user input data. Currently, it's not removed right away, uh, right after the analysis finished, so it's also on the server. And now I think we can move uh, to the last uh, part of my presentation uh, to the averaging uh, functionality of Ismara and Crema. So these uh, uh, functions are exactly the same between two servers. So I'm not going to present it separately. But before I start with averaging, uh, are there any questions about data submission, upload? and so on. No, okay. Then let's go uh, uh, to the averaging. So uh, what averaging does, it allows you uh, to divide samples into the uh, different subset, into the different groups, and uh, then calculate uh, average activity and corresponding average error bar for every group. Also uh, calculate significances of motifs across the specified groups and identify regulators uh, which have uh, uh, very little within a group, but uh, very quite a lot between the groups. So you can identify uh, motifs which uh, consistently significant uh, across different groups. And what kind of groups these are? So the simplest example uh, replicates. So uh, Eric has already shown example when we uh, average replicates of the mouse liver data set. So you can do this to, uh, to remove uh, uh, to remove the noise between the replicates. Then uh, Another example could be when you average by tissue type. This I am going to show later on. So uh, in my case, I, I, I'm show, uh, I will show results for averaging between uh, cancer and non-cancer tissues. And uh, also, I think we also have it somewhere on uh, example pages. Yeah, uh, for one data set, it was possible to do averaging by age because uh, the subjects of the study were of different age, so you can actually uh, uh, also make such uh, uh, such analysis. All right. So uh, how uh, averaging works? So here I try to do some illustration. So let's say originally I had six data points, and these are the uh, replicate pairs of replicates. And uh, what happens uh, after averaging? So it's basically going to average activity and corresponding error bar for this group. And you, I will get a signal, uh, single point instead of two. And yeah, so uh, I get uh, activity and error bar recalculated. And now for, for this new data, for these new groups, I can uh, again calculate the significance and find motifs which are which are important for the specified uh, group groups. So, uh, so how it works? So here some uh, a little bit of math. So we uh, assume that uh, measured uh, activities within the groups are coming from so, some unknown mean activity with unknown variance. So mean activity of the group and unknown variance of the group, and uh, when probability to obtain the uh, observed activity is uh, given by this formula and um, probability of uh, our data given this uh, mean activity and uh, variance of the group is given like this. And by uh, maximizing uh, this probability uh, over the uh, over the variance, we can uh, uh, yeah. we can find the uh, the mean activity of the group and also the corresponding error bar. So exactly like shown on the pictures. 
So, uh, and here's, yeah, again, example of uh, averaging uh, replicates for the, uh, this is Illumina uh, body map data set. So you see, uh, so pairs of replicates are merged. And uh, since the replicates are really good, so you see the original values are very close and um, error bars are relatively slow, small, merging them actually produce uh, uh, results which have very small error bars, so it significantly improves uh, the significance of the inferred transcription factors. And uh, what I'm going to do now is to demonstrate uh, how actually it uh, works exactly where person have to click, uh, how to specify new sample names and so on. And for that, I'm going to use uh, a data set uh, which contains uh, epithelial cells and uh, also mesenchymal cells. So there are two replicate, uh, so there is one sample of epithelial cells, two replicates, and three subpopulations of mesenchymal cells, two replicates. So I'm going to make a averaging. So let, let me switch the sharing window. So this is the main page of this data set. And if you would like to perform a sample averaging, so all you need to do is just to click this button. And uh, in this sample table, uh, you will see some additional uh, buttons and input fields. So uh, first of all, uh, you can enter your email address if you like to uh, receive email notification once uh, analysis is finished, then you can also specify a project name. By default, this is original project name only with uh, average prefix. And now we actually need to specify uh, new subsets uh, in the data set. So how, how to do this? So uh, you, you need just to check uh, a condition from drop down menu. So you see, uh, I'm going to specify it's going to be condition one. This is also condition one because we, these are two replicates of the same condition. And you see when I click uh, now this select box, I have now new option condition two. So if I select it, I now have additional option condition three. So you can always, yeah, specify more and more conditions if necessary. So. I'm going to average replicate. So this is condition two, this is condition three, and this is condition four. Also for my convenience, I can specify the names of a new group. So in my case, let's call it, let's call this is epithelial and this is mesenchymal one. So this is one subpopulation. This is mesenchymal two second, and this is third. And by the way, you see, uh, when I type in one uh, field, uh, the name is changing uh, also in all fields uh, for condition, for the same condition. So in this case, condition four, I have two times condition for chosen. And when I change in one field, it automatically changes in another one also. So it's going to be the third one. And yeah, I can give my address. And yeah, all I need to do just to click submit data for averaging. And now uh, I'm again forwarded to the status page, like uh, submitting data to Ismara. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, if you haven't provided your email, you have to uh, save the corresponding URL to check it later. Uh, normally, uh, running averaging jobs takes really a range of like 10, 15 minutes, sometimes even shorter. So this is quite fast. 
Right. Let me switch back. I would like to talk also about another feature. And this is built in batch correction. And meanwhile, actually, my um, uh, average and run is going to finish, I guess. Okay. So uh, we also have uh, one extra feature for average and functionality, which is called batch effect correction. So the approach we use is extremely simple. Uh, and also, we always say it should be used uh, with. Uh, uh, caution because uh, potentially it might be dangerous to to apply it to the data which do not require batch correction so uh, what it does so in case uh, so let's say we had a data set this is a kind of real story uh, it uh, which was done in two batches and two replicates per condition and you see basically that there is for example in condition two this is extremely high variance between uh, Two replicates as high as between uh, basically uh, uh, conditions itself but if you plot the same data uh, by batches so you can see that basically they are uh, almost exactly the same so uh, they go up go down but there is a systematic shift between the batches and in order uh, to fix such situation we apply a procedure which standardize the data so what it does, so before uh, running averaging procedure, we actually take uh, activities uh, within a page and uh, first of all, uh, shift and rescale it by uh, subtracting mean activity within a group and normalizing it by uh, 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 variance of activities within a group. And we also rescale error bars in this case, and we also rescale it by uh, variance of activities within a group. And once we uh, standardize data like this, so you see what is happening. So basically it was rescaled and moved and shifted. And uh, after this standardization, we apply uh, the averaging procedure and uh, this I'm going again to show with uh, the real page. Moment, how do I? Yes, I stop it here. I share my page. Sorry for delay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Let's go back again to this uh, epithelium mixing chemical transition uh, data set. So, uh, in order to apply the uh, batch effect correction, so first I again click on the uh, perform sample averaging. I provide my uh, email address. And you see there is an additional button advanced option replicate batch correction. And in addition to the uh, uh, first column, uh, which can, uh, contains a condition selector, we now have a second column, which contains batch character. And now I can select that, yeah, again, so it was condition one, condition two, condition three. And again, I specify, so this is epithelial cells. This is living chemo one, 
HTML2, HTML3. And now I can specify the batches. So uh, yeah, they are actually indicated in the sample name. So you see A, B, A, B. So uh, let's so this is batch one, this is batch two. You made an error, Michal. No, it's not here. Uh, it's actually, yeah. Uh, actually, it should be condition three here. Yeah, I overlooked it. And this is condition four. And this is condition two. This is condition three. This is condition two. Isn't yeah. the second line a different batch than the first line? No, 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 no. So this is batch one, this is batch two. Yes, okay. Now these are batch one, batch one, batch one. And these are batch two, batch two, batch two. Yes. Okay. Now it should be correct. And yeah, all you'd have to do is just again, click uh, submit data for averaging. And uh, yeah, after some time you will uh, obtain the results. So in, uh, in this case, uh, basically uh, there is quite good reproduci reproducibility between the replicates with uh, low error bars. So we do not obtain much over averaging, but uh, yeah, I think uh, this small data set is really good for demonstrating. Okay, and the last thing to show, uh, where is it? And the last thing to show is um, uh, how to uh, uh, the results of averaging between different uh, cell types. So this is example of how you can uh, make a contrasts uh, between different, for example, tissues or cell types in the data set. And uh, we used for that a data set which contains 79 uh, tissue and cell lines, healthy tissue and cell lines, and also uh, 60 reference cancer cell lines. So all together, it's more than 100 samples. And uh, all these quite uh, variable uh, samples we have divided into two groups. So uh, one contain uh, uh, only cancer sample, and another group contain only non-cancer sample. So this data set you can actually uh, check from the examples page, uh, from the example example section of the main ISMAR page. And uh, here I show uh, a final results after the averaging. So you can see here I list the top motifs which were uh, inferred. Uh, after the averaging procedure. And so you, you see it indicates, so for example, this motif is going up in the cast in the cancers. Uh, this motif goes down, this up, up, down, up. And uh, the interesting thing that, for example, these uh, uh, motifs which have, uh, I think this is, uh, uh, CAT motif, uh, Yes, CAT motif, I think. So uh, it's well known uh, that uh, targets of uh, these uh, transcription factors are very highly expressed in the cancer. This one, which go goes down, is uh, very important for DNA repair and uh, uh, dysfunction of DNA repair mechanics, actually also one of the uh, cancer indicators. Uh, MIC, 
Mekin and uh, mixed transcription factors are very well known on for genes, and you see they are very up in the cancers. This one uh, uh, was shown to be a, a important transcription factor for uh, cell proliferation and also extremely active in the cancer cells. So you see, uh, even with very large and uh, very heterogeneous data sets, uh, with averaging procedure, you can uh, obtain some very interesting insights on uh, transcription factors and regulators, which are driving changes between uh, different uh, groups of interest, which you can choose from the uh, set of samples. Okay, thank you very much. I've